What's up, everybody? Josh Tap here again, and welcome back. So today, it's actually quite interesting. Um, I'm, I've been excited for this one. So I'm going to just announce our guest first off. His name's Ray Tap, which if you actually know me, not as the Lucky Titan, but it's Josh Tap. This is my brother. So yes, we are Mormon. Yes, we are one of eight children, both of us. No, we are not polygamists. Um, so we're excited to uh, to be here representing the large families. But I'm I'm really excited to have Ray here because what we're doing is Ray and I were talking about this. We've been talking about this what for like a year, Ray, about like something like that. Yeah, you, you jumping in and, and doing a business, and we've been um, we were talking back and forth about how how podcasting can help you close high ticket sales. But Ray is actually in an industry that wouldn't typically have this. So Ray is actually in the, the builder industry, right? So he, they do, uh, excuse me, like the building tables and whatnot, right? So building or constructing built-ins for people. And, and so there's, it's a very highly competitive industry, but we're like, how do we, how do we make this stand out and help you guys, obviously, you know, Ray close some, some bigger deals. Um, and that being said is, is we kind of wanted to, to record this process. Cause I was like, Hey, I'm going to be sharing this with them anyways. Right. Why don't we just record this? And, uh, Let's let the world know how the process works. So yep. first off, Ray, you can say what's up to the world. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> good, to, good to have you here, man. So yeah, thanks for having me on, man. Oh, you betcha. So the first thing that we really want to dive in, so this is just for everybody to, to have an understanding, is that when Ray and I were talking, we're like, okay, should he be doing something that's more cut and dry, where it's like, hey, they could be doing cutting boards, right? Something that's kind of ironic, actually. I'd, should have, should have prefaced that, but anyway, so doing, <laughs> you could do cutting boards. We could be busting out like 10 a day and be selling a bunch of those low ticket items or, or one of their expertise that way he can really do well is, is do built-ins for people, but he also makes this beautiful furniture, um, for people that's customized, you know, built for, for the individual. And it's like, which, which one do you start with? And when we were talking about it, and this is the same conversation I have with everybody, and I'm one of the reasons I wanted to have Ray on the show with this is that this is one of those unorthodox industries that we don't talk about a lot, but it presents that opportunity to say this works no matter what industry you're in. So the, the big question that we come down to is what's the product, right? What product should we actually be selling? And if you do what, you, what I would call like a market analysis, the average company is going to be saying, hey, you need to just bust through cabinets. Cabinets are the best place to go, Right. Ray, you've worked at cabinet shops, you know how it goes. It's like a freaking factory to, to just bust yep. through as many cabinets as you can. But then, you know, you have the other people who are like, hey, let's have an Etsy shop or, or whatnot, right? Do maybe more low ticket items, but it's something you can do from home and keep more of the margins or you know, like what you've done, it's going in and building these amazing built-ins for people or whatnot. But at the end of the day, this is what I always tell people when we when we go to start a business is you start with the highest ticket product first, and then you work your way backwards because instead of having yep. to make 3000 sales at $10, you only have to make one or two sales at a hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is. Right. And some of you listening to this might be like, Whoa, how do you make a hundred thousand dollars doing something with wood? Right. <laughs> so we're here to talk about that today um, yep. about the product and, and kind of deep diving into that and where we're going to go with this company and, and by we, I mean you, right? So right. Um, feel free to just ask questions back and forth. We can just kind of dive into this. But um, you got it. so I want to ask you first, Ray, is like, what's, what's the motivating factor behind the company? Uh, for me, one of the, the biggest things, so my, my personal motivation is when I build something and somebody's like, man, that is stunning. Like that just really like, I don't know. It, it really warms my heart. It makes me want to do more of it. Right. And, and provide that service. So, which I think kind of is a, a business thing in general, right. We always want to provide yeah. something awesome to people. Um, but for me, it's, it's being able to hear that. Um, and also being able to, uh, to give back, right. Um, with, with the, the things that I make. So it's, um, I will probably talk about this a little bit later, but the, the business, that we're doing is we're planning not to cut trees down, right? We're not, um, we're not going out and purchasing wood from a Lowe's or Home Depot, um, or you know, big box store that you know that sells it. And who knows where they get it from? But but finding responsibly sourced stuff to, um, so that we're we're rescuing trees essentially, right? And we're turning them into a, a conversation piece for somebody's house. And so that for me, being able to to be environmentally responsible, um, as well as create something that 
um, is beautiful for someone's home um, is, is motivating this part of the business. Yeah. I love that. Cause I mean, you, you talked about, we were talking about this before. And I'm like, this is brilliant. And you're like, Hey, I'd love to donate to two different charities from the proceeds that come from this one being planting trees. Right. So if you want to talk right. through that and then the other one, go for it. Yeah. So, yeah. So with, with every purchase that somebody makes from us, we, we donate to a, um, a charity called the uh, one tree planted.org. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't want to just plant one tree either. Right. right. You know, you, you buy a piece of furniture from us and it's a high end piece of furniture. We're going to plant a hundred trees for you. Um, right. so, so we're really giving back that way. Um, and then the other charity we donate to is, um, uh, is Daraja Academy, which is a high school for girls in Africa, um, where they're just not, not a lot of the women that all go through their, the primary education, essentially what would be compared to elementary maybe middle school here in the United States. Um, but before the, by the time they get to the secondary education, right, they're not, they're not really passing that. They end up within all kinds of other issues there. So being able to help build the women over there as well is, um, is important. You know, it's, it's helping out, not just us and the trees and, you know, people here, but, you know, people abroad as well. Yeah. Kind well, of it's a global gen focus for us. Thing. Yeah. That's what I love about, when you brought that up, I'm like, oh man, we should need to share that on the show because that's, that's cool. And what I, I'm hoping a lot of you who are listening, are, you're listening to that and you're going, I could back that. Like, Hey, when I buy a coffee table, I'm getting half a forest plant. I mean, I mean, if it was 50 right. trees, whatever it was, you know, like that's pretty cool um, that, that you're able to do that, you know? And, and when you look at it that way, how that automatically is a differentiating factor. If we did nothing else other than mm -hmm. donating to those two places, you could, you could actually start tying every time. So when, when you sell a, uh, I'm just gonna use a coffee table as an example, you sell a yeah. coffee table, you're like, this equates four trees planted. This is all repurposed wood. None of this is coming from something that was standing, right? Yeah. This is something that was already cut down that we've, that we've uh, you know, taken and we're, we're re repurposing. It's a conversation piece or whatnot. But then you could be like, oh, this cutting board is one tree planted or this, you know, and like, that's yeah. huge. And then you know, when you're selling the higher ticket items, like you just fun funded a girl's entire education, right? That's yep. huge. Um, when it, when it comes to, to actually like differentiating yourself as a business, um, and as a show. So right. love that. Um, now you also mentioned in there, right? Cause this is something we, we talked about before, but, um, mm -hmm. you mentioned that the, um, yeah, like one, of the, one of the things that brings you the feel goods really, right. <laughs> is that yeah. it's, it's when somebody's like, that is stunning. That's an amazing piece of portrait because for you, you're like, I built that. Yeah. We put that together, we put that into your home. And, and now you have this, yeah, you know, this, this amazing piece in your house that becomes a conversation mm -hmm. piece. So I want to ask you more about that, right? Because the truth is, is whenever you do, whenever you buy a piece of furniture, everybody mm -hmm. compliments it or comments on it. Right. But like Kinsey and I, you know, we'll buy this crappy old couch or something that we want to throw in the basement. And people are like, well, you got a new couch. I see your couch. Right? Like, furniture is just something that people automatically see when they enter your home. Right. And then we always tell the story. You know, it's like, oh yeah, we got that on Facebook for like 400 bucks or whatever. Right. You know, um, yep. but, but it's also on the flip side when we're like, oh, we actually spent a good chunk of money on, on this coffee table or whatnot. And it was like a few thousand dollars or whatever. And then they're like, like, oh, nice. That's a beautiful coffee table. Yeah. Here's the story. There's this guy, blah, blah, blah. blah right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we and I were talking about this, right. Of like, that can be the differentiating factor yep. is that there's the story behind the individual piece of furniture. Right. Mm -hmm. And you've been sending me a lot of pictures of this the past couple of weeks. And it's been fun to see like, oh yeah, that could be a really cool story. You could build around that. Right. And I mean, you just imagine, and this is something I want to just share with, with the, the audience here, you know, our, our company, Podcast Multipliers, we're not doing anything that's rocket science. I mean, you could have anybody do what we do. The fact mm -hmm. that we put it all together in the system we do is, is a differentiating factor, but it's not enough to get people. It's the story that we sell, right? And what we always say to people is, um, you know, we're talking with highly successful entrepreneurs or you know, they're typically doing 100 million plus per year. And so we come to them and if we started saying, okay, you just have to show up for one hour a day, they wouldn't, they wouldn't move on it. But we say, hey, what if you could have an entire content strategy in one hour a month and you could be known as a thought leader in one hour a month? And with that, 
you record for one hour and you step away. You don't have to do anything. We will repurpose your content. We'll post it everywhere. And they're sitting here going, that's a cool, that's a story, right? For them, because they can see themselves in that. And I tell my story, you know, I was doing a daily show and being able to manage a daily show. If any of you have ever tried to do that, it's, <laughs> it's a full-time job, period. Um, especially if you're trying to grow it and turn it into a business. But if you leverage other people, you can step out. And what happened for me was that we end up hiring a bunch of people and handing it all off. Literally, all I do is record these. I upload them to Google Drive and I step away and everything is taken care of. And obviously you all know, because you see the content everywhere, that this is, um, that the methodology works. But it's the exact same thing with the furniture concept, right? Is saying, hey, how do we create a story that it's so compelling that somebody is willing to spend $100,000 for a table instead of $500 for a table, right? Absolutely. So two things here, right, is the story, but the second thing is the customer, right? Mm. So I'm just kind of curious with you, Ray, because I know we were talking about this, but when I first mentioned that to you of like, hey, well, why don't you just start selling to super rich people? Like, what was your initial thoughts? I'm just curious. <laughs> uh, I mean, initial thoughts were, I mean, you and I have talked about, you know, you've got to, if you want people to spend money, you've got to go to the people who actually have money to spend. So, I mean, initial thoughts were first one was a little bit scary, like, I mean, yes, I love to have, you know, my furniture in, in these houses um, and businesses and places, but yeah, I was also kind of like, yeah, I guess I hadn't really thought of, of that market as well. Um, you know, and you and I have talked a little more about some of the intricacies of, um, uh, intricacy is not the right word, but some of the nuances of working um, with a higher end product like that, or, you know, higher end market as well. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's an exciting idea uh as well as just you know get, it opened my mind to think more about the customer base right i you know originally i was thinking you know, i don't i never wanted to be the low guy you know with the with the the lowest price product you know to try and compete with target and walmart and all those kind of places um and then you know my sales pitch is is just i've got you know i'm a much better handmade product but at the same time they're looking at it go, it looks just like this other one but it um, just kind of opened my mind to say, okay, there's a much bigger, uh, what's the word? I don't know, a much bigger market out there, a much, a much more affluent market that I could be going for. Yeah. Well, and I was just curious about that because the reason I asked that is because I, I know that the, the first things, like you said, it's, it's freaking scary at the beginning where you're like, yeah. oh my goodness, how? And then that's my other question too is like, what are the barriers to where you're currently at? that are preventing you mm -hmm. from, from selling to somebody like that? Like, what do you, what do you see as those barriers? I'm like genuinely doing research here. So. I'm yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, so barriers, I, you know, is, is uh, for one, getting in front of those people. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, that's the biggest thing. Um, and then I don't know, maybe product delivery, you know, if, if it's, you know, we're, we're in a global market really. Right. So we do need to be able to ship to different places. But again, if I'm making a, you know, a $50,000, $100,000 conference table for someone, how am I going to get it to them? Right. So there's some of the, like the logistics part of it. Um, but also, is it a white glove service? Because, you know, this thing, they're, they're paying a ton of money for something like this. Um, right. Yeah. So those are kind of the first couple of things come to mind as far as barriers go. But yeah, again, just, just knowing or reaching those people. Um, yeah. And building that network of those, of people who, who are in that market. Yeah. And I was just curious about that. Cause that, that seems to be the, the overarching theme is like, well, how the heck do I get in front of them? And then how do I deliver a product that's when it shows up, they're not disappointed. They're like, Whoa, yeah, this is way cool. Exactly. You know? Um, and I have some ideas of that. We can dive into here in a second. Wait. Um, just to kind of throw it your way, but so, you know, everybody, we've, we've talked about this over and over and over again on this show, but when you're trying to get in front of the hyper wealthy, you need to have a great offer first off, but you need to actually have something that they want. And yeah. so we're going to touch on a couple of those things. So let's, let's first talk offer rate. Cause I think this will be a, um, a fun conversation on this. So, you know, yeah. we, we talk about building a table, for example, I'm just going to keep using a table as an example to keep this linear. Yep. Let's but, do it let's just say, like you said, a conference table. If we look at your ideal customer as it, and, and we have to put it this way, right? If you're like, you know what? I want to make a hundred thousand dollars every time I make a piece of furniture. 
some people might be like, yeah, that's impossible. But then look at Beverly Hills, right? I found this article yep. the other day, right? I should have sent it to you. I, I need to go find it. But it was like, it's one of these like sketchy rapper guys. And they had mm -hmm. bought this. It was like a chair, like a throne chair yeah. um, that they built for themselves. $400,000 for this chair. And they, they want it because they want it in their music videos and stuff. It's not like their centerpiece, but I'm like, that is just ridiculous. 400 grand for a chair. Yeah. But then I started going, okay, but somebody made that chair and they pocketed 400 grand for making a chair. And the funny thing right. is they probably went to Ikea and then put some gold full <laughs> and walked yep. away, you know? Um, but, but that's the thing, right? Because that guy obviously was like, I want the story of being able to say, this is my $400,000 table. Here's yep. why. Um, now I don't think you want to sell the rappers. I don't think that's your MO, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I also, um, good friend of mine, right? He, he, um, he buys McLarens for fun, mm -hmm. right? He buys three or four of them a year and then flips them. He basically like breaks world records in them and then flips them. <laughs> it's a brilliant right. strategy. The guy makes like millions of dollars a year doing it as a hobby, which is disgusting. But, uh, <laughs> Kevin, if you're listening to this, you're welcome. Shout out to Kevin Hodes. Um, but this guy, right. It's a conversation piece. Anytime somebody asks him about something, he's, he talks about his McLaren because it's, mm -hmm. he's excited about it. It's something, but there are people like him who are willing to drop a million dollars on a car simply for the ability for them to tell a story, right? Yeah. The money's great for him, but it's like, you don't have three McLarens <laughs> to just have three McLarens, right? It's because of the yeah. story. Right. And, um, I look at the way that that you're going about this of saying, Hey, how do we tell a story with each piece of furniture? Right. And so this, this is how I would structure the offer. If I were you, I would take it and say, okay, have an idea of a few different pieces of very unique wood that you could get. Right. You sent me one that was like, I think it was a tree that had been in front of like the town hall or something, the wood that had been in front of the yeah. town hall for, for years in North Carolina. Right. I yep. guarantee you in that city, there's somebody who makes a hundred million dollars a year, guarantee it. And they are yep. probably, probably have a political affinity towards wanting a tree that would be sitting in front of the, the town hall. <laughs> and if you say, Hey, you want to have your town hall meetings in front of this table, right? So each one of the, the offers has to be customized because it's a $50,000, $100,000 or whatever table, right? But if you come to them and say, Hey, right. here's the story, but then you can come to them and say, is there, is there some story in your life that you want illustrated through the furniture in your, in your room. Right. So when oh, you sit good. down with them, you have a, you have a great conversation with them about like, well, what, what are your morals, your standards, your beliefs, and let's pick that apart and say, okay. And then maybe what, what they're doing is they're giving you what they're actually looking for. And then you go find it. Right. So let's just say, yeah. let's just say, I'm using Obama. I don't know why I'm using him as an example, but anyway, it's using Obama. Right. <laughs> I think he grew up in like Hawaii or something. But he's been living in, in DC, in Chicago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or, yeah. Wherever he lives, right? Um, if you went to Obama, you know, you know, his a political affinity, you know, a lot of his opinions. And most entrepreneurs, you'll know that because they're very vocal about it. So you already kind of know what they're, where their standing is. So when you meet with them, you've already done your yeah. research, you know this about them. But then you start to ask them about their childhood and about kind of those pivotal moments for them. And um, maybe not use Obama, it's just somebody who like immigrated, right? Um, I met this guy, David Hensel is his name. Another uh -huh. shout out to you, David. He's probably listening. Um, but but he um, he's German, but I think he's living in Turkey now. He's been to the U.S. He's lived like everywhere. But uh, he's still, Germany's still in his heart, right? So if you were like, hey, this is uh -huh. a tree from your hometown that you inscribed your initials in with you and your girl, your first girlfriend, you know? Hopefully she's right. your wife now kind of thing. But that's the story that he can say, this is the table. And I found this guy and he actually went and found that tree after it had been cut down and repurposed that wood into this table that you're sitting at right now. Like that people are willing to spend money on, on that story. Right. Um, so that's number one. That's what I would do as far as from a story perspective. Number two is I would actually go about it of how do you make it not just that they're buying a piece of furniture, but how do you make it an experience? Right. Yeah. Which part of it is where you're talking to them about, their actual needs and everything, right? About, well, what are you actually, um, you know, like, tell me about your, your history or whatever. And they start telling you all these stories. And then you say, you know what, I'm going to make it my goal in life over the next week to find some wood that actually fits that. 
And then, mm-hmm. then you can sell them on it, right? 25 grand for a coffee table made out of your grandmother's coffin. I know that's a horrible one. Out of your grandma, a tree in your grandmother's yard. <laughs> your grandmother's <laughs> coffin. Um, <laughs> tree made her and then do the, <laughs> um, But you know what I'm saying? Because like for them, they're like, yep. oh, this has so much more meaning. Um, wow, that got dark really quick. So um, we're, we're going to pretend you said her yard. Yeah, it her yard. Like yeah, the, yeah, it was in the carpet. backyard where you grew up swinging in this tree every year. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. Um, so that's, that's the kind of stuff that like, they'd be, they'd be more than excited about having, you know, as far as the product, but the product is never what they buy, right? They're buying the story, but they also should be buying the story of you. And in my thought, you talked about delivery, right? I wouldn't put it in the back of some crappy old semi truck, right? What you do mm-hmm. is you, you'd rent this ridiculous, you know, it's going to cost you $3,000 to rent this truck or whatever, you know, for a day yep. to have it, maybe you deliver it to their hometown and then you rent this or something, but you, you have it roll up, you know, with spotlights, there's a band playing, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting right. ridiculous here, but, <laughs> but so that when it rolls up, they're like, what on earth? Right. And their whole neighborhood sees it. Right. Yeah. Neighborhood sees, oh, wow. These guys are rolling up um, with, there's something going on over here. Right. Um, and then you deliver them the table, you have it set up, you maybe bring in a whole bunch of people as a party being like, hey, check out this house. And I'm saying like, those are the sort of, that's yeah. the experience. I know I'm, I'm getting a little crazy with this, but if that opens your mind a little bit to think about that experience of the delivery is huge mm-hmm. because that is what we call an Instagrammable moment, right? Yeah. If you look at um, Magnolia, the, the home group, right? Um, have you ever, I'm sure you've seen them. Ch- uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, their first TV show, what they would do every time, is they would have a giant canvas in front of the house so that the the new owner wouldn't see the renovation. They see this giant mm-hmm. canvas of their old home so that they could see the before right. and after. And then they pulled it open, and that story was an Instagrammable moment. I mean, they've made YouTube videos that like their social media content comes from that, right? You do mm-hmm. one of those tables. And you you make it that big of a deal, you're gonna get fifty thousand orders they, because they're like, whoa, this was cool. Who makes these tables? Yeah, those uh, you know those resin tables that everybody's been doing. Yeah, the epoxy, the river tables. Yeah, yeah the river. T- the first guy who did this figured it out. Found the guy who does it. He um, I think he's charged like ten to twenty thousand dollars for one of those tables. So it's high ticket, mm-hmm. not not ridiculous. But yeah. the way that that worked is he got commissioned to make this table. He decided, you know, let's just get creative with it. So he makes a river that runs to the middle of this, this wooden table, sells it for 20 grand, but he actually records the whole process, puts it on YouTube. It goes viral. I think that video has like 50 million views on it at this point. Yeah, something like that. Um, something ridiculous. But then that, <laughs> that video um, has gone on to make him millions of dollars making table. He probably doesn't even make him himself anymore. Um, right. We'd have him on the show because I want to be like, hey, how'd you do it? That's um, good idea. But he found a niche. He found what, what people were actually looking for. And for you, you could start with, hey, let's do this coffee or this, this uh, conference table. And if they love it, then you continue with it. If you can make the experience really cool. If not, try something else. Be like, hey, you know what? Let's mm-hmm. make you a, a coffee table. That's the most amazing thing ever, right? Or a bed frame or whatever they want. Um, yeah, there's like any number of things you could do from an offer perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts Can't on that? It. No, <laughs> just, I'm, I'm just, over here just spewing on you. Um, yeah, it's perfect. I'm taking a ton of notes here. So <laughs> good guess. It's not video. You can see all the notes I'm taking here. Yeah, exactly. We just, so just so everybody knows for the next few episodes, I am not doing video. I got bit by like 5,000 mosquitoes. I don't know what happened, but they're all over my face. So it's embarrassing. <laughs> um, but anyways, so, so that's the story, right? So then how do you get in front of these people? That's the next big question. Um, yeah. you know, how, how are you getting them excited to meet with you? So this is where Ray's already committed to do this. So I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there, but he's actually going to be starting a podcast interviewing these people. Right. Yep. I want to, I want to explain the logic behind why we decided to do this because when it comes to, you know, telling the story and, and figuring out what people actually want, you need to actually sit down with those people it's not, and, and the problem that people try to do is they, they're like, okay, I need to sell, 
a $10,000 product or something, right? And then they go out and they find a list of, of a bunch of people who are their ideal customers. And they sit here trying to market to them and trying funnels and trying all these different ridiculous sales tactics that get them nowhere because they get pitched 5,000 times a day. The wealthy get pitched all the time. Um, and as, as you ascend the ranks of wealth, you'll see like your email just gets fuller and fuller and fuller and fuller. And the truth is, I mean, I'm not even nearly as wealthy as a lot of these people, but I don't even manage my own social media, email, or any of those things anymore because I don't have time to. So there are people who are paid to literally be my gateway. But here's the thing. If you want to cut through that smoke and, and say, okay, well, what, what do the rich want? How do I get an opportunity to sit down with them? The way you do that is by giving them a platform to stand on and to promote their message, right? Uh -huh. That could be a Facebook Live. That could be a podcast. That could be a YouTube channel. That could be whatever. Here's why I think YouTube is the number one fastest way to make it happen because they cannot see the results. Okay? They don't know how successful of a show it is. And the truth is they do not care. So I had, you know, those of you who listening to this show, I think it was episode five or six. I had Steve Sims on here. And Steve actively talks about his net worth, but the guy has done over a billion dollars in sales in his lifetime, right? I was five episodes in. I think I like Ray may have been listening to it. My mom was yep. probably listening to it here or there. <laughs> that was it. And, but, but he was willing to come on the show. And then when he came on, I was like, yep, your episode number five. He's like, great. I'm so excited to be in the, in that first bunch. Cause he's like, you're going to go far. And I always refer back to his episode. Right. And so the truly wealthy, they want to support you. They, they want to help us, the people who are, are trying to get a leg up, uh -huh. but most of them just don't have time to do it in a, can I, can we get coffee together? Right. First off, I don't drink coffee. So that gets awkward. But when you <laughs> sit down with somebody over, I try to get them to sit down over coffee or lunch. They've already got 15 people vying for that spot for the day. And you are definitely not the number one on their list. Right. Cause they have Warren Buffett knocking on their door saying, let's go get coffee. Of course they're going to go get coffee with him. Right. Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons why I recommend doing a podcast is it, it gives them an opportunity to say, you know what, I want to meet with you. I want to talk with you. I want to get to know you, but doing this is a PR opportunity for me to get some exposure. Yeah. At the end of the day, most podcasts can get anywhere from 20 to 50 downloads an episode, which might sound like very few people, but have you ever spoken in front of 50 people before? Like it's, that's quite it a few people. Yeah. 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 It, that's, you'd be nervous. Right? And people are like, oh, I only get 50 downloads. I'm like, you had 50 people sitting there listening to you. That's a big deal. <laughs> um, and I will go on a show if they've got those sort of numbers. You know, like if they told me they had 10 people, I'm like, great, what's the niche? Let's talk. Because odds mm -hmm. are one of those 10 people is going to have interest in what we do and they're going to reach out to me and whatever. Um, it's never a wasted opportunity for them. So that's why I recommend doing a podcast. That's why, like for Ray, let's talk through titles let's talk to topics let's actually dive into this because this is what we've been going back and forth on um yeah. for the past week or so um and for those of you who are listening this is this is actually the main reason we want to do the show is to actually talk through this section but i wanted to give a a whole lot of reason why we're doing it so they're not just like wait you you build furniture and you're doing a podcast right so <laughs> on a marketing podcast that's weird. right exactly <laughs> <laughs> so you know, Ray, you've, you've kicked me a whole bunch of ideas on podcast titles. And the one thing I always tell people is that the title is virtually inconsequential. People will tell you it has to be one way or another. There are a little couple of nuances I recommend, but we'll, we'll kind of dive into that. Um, but uh, the number one thing to think about with the podcast title is what would somebody, what type of show would they want to come on, your guest? And so if you were to say, hey, this is a show about... Um, you know, building cabinets, an mm -hmm. entrepreneur who's in marketing is not going to come on your show. Cause they're like, I don't know anything about this. Right. <laughs> right. And they might be like, yeah. who cares? Yeah. But they'd be like, well, it just doesn't fit my, my topic. But if you say, Hey, this is a show about entrepreneurs and interviewing some of the world's top entrepreneurs and gleaning their stories. Now I'm going to go back to where we were talking earlier. Mm -hmm. If you want to build a great piece of furniture for somebody, those are the questions you need to be asking them anyways about their history. Right. So you should yeah. be bringing them on and, and be like, tell me some of like the, the, your number one story that you'd say is like the life where your life changed. Let's, let's talk your life changing story. Oh my goodness. I'm rambling, but let's, let's talk your, your life changing story. And then you just do it on the show. Right. Uh -huh. So the methodology behind that is saying, okay, you're actually identifying their needs while creating a great piece of content. 
which then after you record that piece of content, it opens the door wide open for you to be able to say, um, well, great. You know what? What if you were to have like a coffee table that would, would tell that story? How about I'm, I'm going to make it my mission for the next week to find a piece of wood that fits that. And if I could, what if we were just to, to build you a table that kind of fits that, um, fits that bill, right? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really butchering that, but that's basically how you would go about it, right? Good general idea. Yep. Yeah, because it's not like a sales pitch by any means. You're saying you should have a centerpiece in your home and that story needs to be heard. You need to keep telling that story over and over and over again because the world needs to know it. And let's make a piece of furniture that can can exemplify that for you, right? Yeah. So every time you look at it, you remember and you remember where you used to be and where you came from and how you're here now. And whenever somebody comes over, they can see it. Whenever you're doing a video, this can be in that video so that the world can see it and they can remember that story, right? For them, it becomes a marketing piece. It becomes a talking piece. It becomes their favorite bed frame that you know, they lay in every <laughs> single night, you know? And they're remembering yeah. that story and that's what you're selling, right? But the podcast allows you to find that story, right? You get to actually find yeah. your brain and get to know them without you being the world's greatest interview. It's just being genuinely curious about their lives, right? Yeah. So if we talk about we talk about titles, we talk about um, the you know the theme of the show. It really needs to be how do you build a title around that theme of interviewing them about their past, right? Mm-hmm. And it's something that they know is, okay, I could be interested in this, right? But what you, what you can do, like Ray, you can do is you can actually say the description of the show, which we'll get to here in a minute. That's where mm-hmm. you're like, hey, I build, I build furniture, right? We're going to say it in a lot sexier way, but it's like, I yep. build furniture that tells a story. And I bring entrepreneurs on here to find out their number one story and share it with the world, right? And then your furniture then tells that story, right? So you can be completely transparent with it. When people come on your show, they're like, okay, this is cool. Like I want to have my story heard, gives them an opportunity mm-hmm. to promote themselves, so on and so forth. So with that being said, if we look at podcast titles, there's two things. Number one, people can copyright your, your, your title. They copyright titles. So you have to be really careful about word for word copying somebody else's because some of the best ones are always taken, especially in the entrepreneurial realm. Yep. Ray, you sent me a couple, right? I'm actually going to pull them up here while we're talking because you, you sent a couple. I was like, ooh, I like these. Um, but then like they were taken. Um, yeah. Let's find it. It's like the Maverick One was uh, the Maverick Builder, yeah. Yeah, the Maverick Builder. Great one, right? But there's already a guy who owns it. He lives in your hometown. Probably not yep. going to work well. <laughs> <laughs> um, even though it's a great title, right? But yep. so what, what I would, because I look, my brain automatically goes like the storied entrepreneur or something, but I think that's like a world famous podcast. <laughs> and that's probably why it came yeah. to mind. Um, <laughs> but the title does really need to be something along those lines of, um, this is what the show is about. You know what I'm saying? It, it's attracting people to your world. So there's, there's two mm-hmm. different ways to do a headline. Let me explain it this way or to do your title. I, it's like mine, we actually went with the iconic memorable things so that people are like, what does that even mean? It sparks curiosity mm-hmm. and then it locks in their brain, right? Because they're like, it's the lucky something or Titan something or other, right? Yeah. And it sticks in their brain. It's like annoying because it's there in their brain. One of my favorite shows, I can't remember the title of it now, but they literally have their logo is a yellow rubber duck on a blue background. It has nothing to do with that. It's a business podcast, <laughs> but I'm like, I bet you if I search that, I could find the show, right? And right. so it's really like, hey, I'm, it's memorable. I will come back to this over and over again. In my opinion, brands like that should be more either marketing centric or some sort of e-commerce type business. But a business like mm-hmm. yours, I would make it more, it's explaining what the show is about, right? Yeah. One of my favorites, two of my favorites. So there's Entrepreneurs on Fire. Pretty obvious what the topic of mm-hmm. that show is. And then you have Marketing Secrets with Russell Brunson, right? It's right. It's apparent in the title of the show, what people are, are going to get from coming on your show. Mm-hmm. So if we think through this, right? I mean, like what would be some of the, the topics of the show that we could be talking about, right? So, I mean, stories would be one of them. Yeah, stories. Um, I don't know. It's, it's the background, right? Of the entrepreneurs are talking to stories um yeah that's that's really kind of the key there um and then maybe finding the finding the one right the one story that means the most to them Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I don't know. The one story, I like that. The one story. Yeah. Legacy comes to mind for me. Yeah, legacy. Um. So uh, there's it, another word that's like legacy, and I can't think what it is, but yeah, long term her uh not heritage um heirloom heirloom love it a heirloom and then um yeah those are good words i like it yeah because the, yeah because we're not talking business entrepreneurship we're not talking those we're talking like what's the story what's what because this is what you're actually going to be pulling from them right that one story i would say that the pivot point for them, right? Or like the, the right. pivotal the pivotal change, the pivotal moment. And when you write these terms down, it actually helps you build the show. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and one of the things too, to think about is your target market doesn't even have to be an industry specific thing. Like, I mean, you could interview actors, you could interview athletes, you could interview entrepreneurs or nonprofit mm-hmm. leaders or anything, right? Um, probably not nonprofits because most of them don't have any money. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, but so it doesn't have to be like the entrepreneur change or whatever you want to call it. Right. It's. That's a good point. Yeah. It could be like the one story or the, you know, it could just be called pivotal change or legacy or, you know, your background story. Like that's literally what it could be. <laughs> yeah. um, and you don't have to get crazy with it. Cause it's like, it's your background story. That's what we're here to talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't have that's to my make- business partner. I was talking about, um, you know, company names too, and and being something along the lines of like storyboard, like a wood with a story, right? Um, storied yeah, board. Said, oh, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Storied board. B o a r d. Yeah. That's how you spell board, right? Yeah, not b o r e. Okay, wow. And that not b o r e d. Boring story. <laughs> <laughs> What's your most boring story? <laughs> boarding stories yeah you could you could make it fun <laughs> um but uh yeah so i love it um because that's the sort of stuff right because then it it brands you so well um yeah i like it well so we'll we'll talk more about this ray obviously off off camera but um yeah i think that gives us enough terms to really pick a great a great title for the show and then we'll have Ray back on, guys. I'm going to be doing this as a series. We're just going to, every time we have a call, we'll be recording it. We're going to make it into a, an interview here um, so that you guys can kind of follow the process here. So when the show launches, we will let you know. So you can go check out Ray's show. Um, he's going to be interviewing, getting kicked off pretty quick here. So yep. um, let's, we're just going to end the interview here as far as um, diving deep, because I think we've covered enough topics to get people really thinking about their offers, thinking about how they're going about creating um a title for their show or whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. Next time we talk, though, I'd really like to talk through um, how we're actually doing those interviews, how we're deep diving into um, getting them excited about being on the show and then actually extrapolating that story and turning it into an opportunity to sell. Um, that's the uh, that's the methodology 101. So if you're, Love those it. of you listening, if you're like saying, hey, I'm ready to start a podcast, um, I really want to get this kicked off. We do have something coming out. This would be the first time I'm going to say this to the world, but we've actually got this new network launching and I don't even know if I want to call it a network yet. We're about a week away from it. We still haven't figured out the title, which is so embarrassing, but by the time this comes out, we'll know what it is. But um, we're basically putting together this network to help podcasters turn their podcasts into business and then monetize immediately. Um, so we're basically t- helping you come in, you be- can pay off your costs of being in the network within the first month and then scale your business indefinitely. Um, we'll be showing you all the different methodologies, helping you do so. I'm really excited about it. I just kind of want to tease that out here as we're as we're moving forward with this. But um, right, it's been awesome having you here, man. So um, everybody, make sure you go check. Yeah, appreciate you having me on. Yeah, you bet. Make sure you go check out podcastmultipliers.com, and we'll see you guys all on the next episode.